Welcome back everybody to another Python tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to go over a few examples of nested for loops and how they work. Let's jump right into our first example. Okay, so we have started out with our outer loop here. And then here we have our inner loop. For the outer loop we have 4i in a range of 1 to 6. So this range will start at 1 and go up 2, but not including 6. So basically, it will go from 1 to 5. Then we use a print with a string to print outer, and we're going to print each element using i of this loop. So then we have our inner loop, which is basically the same as our outer loop. However, in this case, we're using 4, j, in the range, 1 up to but not including 6. Then once again, we use a print that will print the string inner, along with all of the elements of the range, and along with a tab. And to make sure we start each row on a new line, we put in an additional print with an empty set of quotes. Okay? So when we run this, this is our output. So let's examine what's happening. For the outer loop, here, it's going to run once and print this. Then it needs to go to the inner loop and it will print every part of the inner loop for everything in the range. So you can see here, for the outer loop, it runs and it prints this. Then the inner loop runs and prints every part of the range. Here. Okay, so let's summarize what's happening. And this will become more clear as we go over more examples. So the outer loop runs. Then everything in the inner loop runs. Then we go back up to the outer loop and it runs. And then everything in the inner loop runs. Once again, the outer loop starts back over. Then everything in the inner loop runs. And that just continues until all the loops are finished. Okay, let's move on to our second example. Here we have created a multiplication table. So once again, we started with our outer loop. Then here we have our inner loop. To start with the outer loop, we use 4i in range going from 1 up to but not including 13, so 1 to 12. Here we have our inner loop using 4 j in a range of 1 up to but not including 13. Then here, for our print, we're going to multiply each number in our range using the variable i times each variable j. Again, those would be numbers 1 through 12 times numbers 1 through 12. And also in the print, we have a tab here. And that would be the tab here. Now once again, to start each row on a new line, we're using a print. Now, before we go over exactly how this works, let's go back real quick. And if we take this example and paste it, and we take out the special formatting, it's still going to work, it's just a little bit harder to read. So let's run it. So what you see is we get all of the output in one column. However, it still works basically the same. So the outer loop runs, and then everything in the inner loop runs. Then it starts over. The outer loop runs, then everything in the inner loop runs, and so on. Okay, so let's go over how this code for the multiplication table works. You can see when we run it, we get our multiplication table. Here we have the 1s, the 2s, the 3s, the 4s, and so on. Okay, so the way this works, we start with the for loop that starts with 1, where the variable i is equal to 1. And that will take 1 times every element in the inner loop, j. And you can see that here. So here we have i. Then in the inner loop, here we have j. 
Then we move on to the outer loop where i is 2. So it's going to take 2 times every element of j, and it's going to look like that. Then we move on to the outer loop where i is 3. So it's going to take the i times every element in the inner loop, j, which is 1 through 12. Okay? So you can see how this works, and this just continues until all the loops are finished. Let's move on to our next example. In this example, we're going to use a nested for loop to make a triangle. However, we're going to slow everything way down. We're actually going to see how this is made. And you'll notice a pattern. So here we have our outer loop. Then here we have our inner loop. And inside the inner loop, we're going to use an if statement. And if i in the outer loop is greater than or equal to j in the inner loop, we're going to print a star. And of course, to start each row on a new line, we put in our print. Now, before we run this, let's go over how this works. So basically, the pattern is for every row, for every column. So for the outer loop one, the inner loop will print one star when using the if statement, because the outer loop is one, which is greater than or equal to the first element in the range of j, using this code here. And it only prints one star, because as soon as j becomes 2, this becomes false. Then we move on to outer loop 2, where i is 2. And it's going to print two stars. Because we're using if 2 is greater than or equal to, it will look at the range of j starting at 1. So i is greater than or equal to 1, that's true, so we get one star. i is greater than or equal to 2, that's true, again because i is 2, but then when it tries to go to 3, that becomes false, so it stops. So we get 2 stars. Then for the outer loop 3, i becomes 3, so when we examine the if statement, 3 is greater than or equal to 1, that's true, we get 1 star. 3 is greater than or equal to 2, that's true, we get another star. 3 is greater than or equal to 3, that's true, so we get another star. But when we go to 3 is greater than or equal to 4, it stops because that's false. And then this pattern will continue for every row, for every column, until complete. So now let's go ahead and run it. And since we've used the time and the sleep to slow this down, you can see how the code will run and build this triangle. Let's run it. Okay, so you can see as the code was running and the triangle was being formed, the pattern for every row, for every column, was being used. Okay, let's go over one final example. In this example, we're going to use a nested for loop to loop over this list of lists, which is similar to a 2D array, to help us identify the vacation spots we might be interested in. So what we have are lists for potential vacation spots. And inside each list, for the first element, we have the vacation spot number, and then the following elements are details. And what we're interested in are vacation spots with ocean. So one way we can do this is with the nested for loop. So we start out with four spots in vacation spots. And basically that will look at each list, starting here, then going here, and here, and so on. And for the inner loop, it's going to look at each list, and then it's going to look at each element in each list. Okay? So once again, it follows the same basic pattern for every row, for every column. So you could think of these as rows, and then think of these as columns. Vacation spot, temperature, characteristics, activities. Okay, so let's continue going over our code. So we have four spots in vacation spots, four details in spots. Then, if ocean is in any of the details, go ahead and print the name of the vacation spot. And the zero is the index. That would just be the first element. 
here. So let's go ahead and run it. And what we can see is that the vacation spots that include ocean include vacation spot one and four. If we do a quick check, we can see vacation spot one has ocean, and so does vacation spot four. So this is an example of how you can use a nested loop to loop through a list of lists or a two-dimensional array. That's all we have for this tutorial. Join us again next time.